away Siemi in Geta Siemi. This video is going to yet again be further proving that the Savior, who's called the Word, is the commandments or the law and vice versa. The law is the Savior. The word of the Creator is the law, commandments. That is the Savior. Watch. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Creator, and the Word was the Creator. The Word was the Creator. John 1.14 then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Creator is the Word, which the Word was given to Moses, which is the commandments. The Creator is the Word, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with the Creator. The Word was the the Creator. John 1 14, then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, the Savior. So the Savior is the Word who is the commandments that were given to Moses. This is proven in John 5.46. Moses wrote about me, the Savior said. Moses wrote down the commandments. The Savior is the commandments. To further prove this, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with the Creator. The Word was the Creator. Isaiah 43 verse 11. The Word was the Creator. Isaiah 43, verse 11. I, yes, I am the creator. There is no other savior. The commandments are the savior. The commandments, that's what will save you. If you don't believe that's what will save you, that's what gives everlasting life. It's proven yet again, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. He is the only true creator, and he is eternal life. He is the only true creator, which is the word, and he is eternal life. The word is eternal life. The commandments provide eternal life. The commandments are the savior, if you follow them. To prove this further, John chapter 12 verse 50 says, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. The Savior is the commands. This is why he said, follow me. He was telling people, follow me. I'm the way. The Savior came and was obedient to the commandments. And he said, follow me. I'm the way. The commandments. The commandments are truth. 
The commandments are life. Proven in Acts. Chapter 7. Verse 38. Moses was with our ancestors. The assembly of the creator's people in the wilderness. When the angel spoke to him at Mount Sinai, and there Moses received life giving words to pass on to us. The Savior said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The Savior is the commandments because Moses received life giving words to pass on to us. The Savior is the commandments. This is why he came and said, follow me. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, the commandments. Because when you keep the commandments, this is how you're able to get to the Father. Just like Moses kept the commandments and was able to go to the Creator on top of Mount Sinai because he kept the commandments. To prove this even further, because that already just proved, the Savior is the Word, which are the commandments, which give life, because the Creator said in Isaiah 43 verse 11, I, yes, I, Zambi Ampungu, I am in Zambia Pungu. There's no other savior. The creator said that. Isaiah 43 verse 11. There's no other savior. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with the creator. And the word was the creator. So the word is the savior. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14. Which means... The Savior is the word that came upon us and said, follow me, follow me, I'm the commandments. Follow me, I'm obedient to the commandments. Follow me and being obedient to the commandments. John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, the life, because Moses received life-giving words to hand on to us in Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Moses received life-giving words. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me, the commandments. Church John 5, verse 3. He is the only true creator, which... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Creator, and the Word was the Creator. The Word was the Creator. 1 John 5.20 He is the only true Creator, and He, the Word, is eternal life. You have to keep the commandments to get everlasting life. According to the Savior, John 12, verse 50, And I know His commands lead to eternal life. Matthew 19, verse 17, If you are to receive everlasting life, you must keep the commandments. Then, if you go to John, verse 15, Sorry, John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10 says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. 
So you have to keep his commandments to remain in his love. You have to follow the Savior in keeping the commandments to remain in his love. In order to become his brother, the Savior's brother. Luke 8 verse 21. The Savior replied, My mother and my brothers are all those who hear the Creator's word and obey it. Because he said, Follow me. I'm the way. The Savior was obedient to the commandments. He's the way that leads to life. Because nobody comes to the Father except through him. He is the commandments. The commandments are the word. 1 John 5 verse 20. The word, which is the commandments, is eternal life. 1 John 5 20. He, the creator, is the only true creator, the only true and zombie. And he, the word, is eternal life. The commands are eternal life because John 12 verse 50, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. Now, to remain in his love, you have to keep his commandments. Because that's what the Savior said in John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. Remain in my love. Just as I keep the Father's commandments and remain in His love, keep the commandments to remain in His love. Just as the Son, to become a brother of the Son, Luke 8, 21, you have to hear the word of the Creator and obey it to become a brother of the Savior or a son of the Creator. You have to hear His word and obey it. And people say, I just have to love the Creator with all my heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit and love my neighbor as I love myself. Okay. You have to keep the commandments to love the Creator. It's proven in John 14, verse 31. He says, And I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. The Savior was obedient to the commandments, which is doing what the Father requires, so the world knows that He loves the Father. To prove that furthermore, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know the Creator, but doesn't obey the Creator's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey the Creator's word truly show how completely they love Him. It's proven even further in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Loving the Creator means keeping His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. To prove this further, 1 John. Chapter 3, verse 22. And we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. What's pleasing to the Creator is obedience to the commandments because the Savior came and when he was obedient to the commandments, he was baptized 
And the creator said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with. We will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. This is proven furthermore in 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Those who obey the Creator's commandments remain in fellowship with Him, and He with them. Those who obey the Creator's commandments remain in fellowship with Him, and He remains in fellowship with us when we obey His commandments. Now, Something is going to happen to the people who don't keep the commandments. If we go into Revelation. To prove this furthermore, the Savior is the commandments, the word. To prove this furthermore, because if, as if that wasn't enough. Revelation 19. Verses 11 through 13. Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True. For he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like the flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. So this is the Savior. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. Verse 13. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the word of the creator. The savior is the commandments slash the word of the creator. So if you follow the savior, you follow the commandments. If you don't follow the commandments, the word of the creator, you don't follow the savior. And you won't receive everlasting life. It's proven in Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. And I know his commandments. I'm sorry. Blessed are those who do his commandments. That they may have a right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. Blessed are those who do his commandments. They may have a right to the tree of life. They may enter through the gates into the city, heaven. If you don't do his commandments, you don't get a right to the tree of life. Because... John 12, verse 50, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and enter into the gates into the city. The holy people of the creator are those who keep his commandments. Watch. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. This proves that the word of the creator, the commandments, is the savior. Revelation 19 verse 13, it says, He wore a robe dipped in blood. His title was the word of the creator, the commandments. Down in verse 16, on his robe at his thigh was written the title, King of all kings. And Mfumu of Mfumus, or L-O-R-D of L-O-R-Ds. So that King of all kings is the Savior, whose title was the Word of the Creator, which is the commandments. The commandments are the Savior. The Savior is the commandments. 
He said, come and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. I know his commands lead to eternal life. I'm the way. Follow me. I'm the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, the commandments. Now, to prove that the holy people are those who keep the commandments. It says here, Revelation 12, verse 17. We'll just go up to Revelation 12, verse 15. Then the dragon tried to drown the woman with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth. But the earth helped her by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that gushed out from the mouth of the dragon. Verse 17. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children. Dash all who keep the creator's commandments and maintain their testimony for the savior. There's a war against the Creator's holy people. The Creator's holy people who the dragon, that is Satan, is warring against are those who keep the Creator's commandments. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children, all who keep the Creator's commandments, and maintain their testimony for the Savior who said, Matthew 19, verse 17, If you are to receive everlasting life, you must keep the commandments. So, the Creator's holy people are those who keep the commandments. Watch. Revelation 13, verse 7. And the beast was allowed to wage war against the Creator's holy people and to conquer them. The beast was allowed to wage war against the Creator's holy people. Back in Revelation 12 verse 17. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children, all who keep the Creator's commandments. Revelation 13, 7. All who keep the Creator's commandments is who the dragon's able to wage war against. And the beast was allowed to wage war against the Creator's holy people. His holy people are those who keep His commandments doesn't say against the Christians or the Catholics or the Protestant, Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness. No, no. It says those who keep his commandments. Those are the creator's holy people. This is why I've been trying to tell people come back to the commandments. Because the Savior is the commandments. If you keep them, it, it will save you. This is how the Savior was saved. He kept the commandments. And the beast was allowed to wage war against the Creator's holy people, who keep the commandments, and to conquer them. He was given authority to rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. Those who belong to the Creator keep His commandments. Those who belong to this world disobey His commandments. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb. Those who belong to the world worship the beast by disobeying the commandments. They're the ones whose names were not written in the book of life, which is it follows in conjunction with Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. 
Those who worship the beast and belong to the world who disobey the commandments, they are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. This means that the Creator's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. Remain faithful to what? Keeping the commandments despite being persecuted by the beast who's waging war against the Creator's holy people who keep the Creator's commandments. Furthermore, it's proven in Revelation 12. 14 verse 12. This means that the Creator's holy people must endure persecution, patiently obeying His commands and maintaining their faith in the Savior who is the commands. Wow. Amazing. All praise, glory, and honor belong to the Creator, Zambiam Pungutulendo, and the Savior, who is the commandments, but He came in the flesh. And before, 2,000 some years ago, His name was Jesus Cristo. But He came again as a man named Simon Toko, or Simao Gonsalves Toko. Right here, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about the Savior and for proclaiming the word of the Creator, which is the commandments. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life again, and they reigned with the Savior for a thousand years. Only those who remained faithful to the testimony of the Savior, proclaiming the word of the Creator, which is the commandments, This is proven in Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Theatira who have not followed this false teaching, which is disobedience to the command. We don't have to keep the commandments. I will ask nothing more of you except that you will hold tightly to what you have, the commandments, until I come. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end. Who obey the Creator. To prove this furthermore, Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere. To prove this furthermore, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know all the things you do, and I have opened the door for you so that no one can close. You have little strength. Yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. And he'll say to the people that think they don't have to keep the commandments. Chapter 3 verses 2 and 3. 
wake up. Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my creator. What are the requirements of the creator? The commandments. And he doesn't change. Old Testament, New Testament, 2024. He doesn't change. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. I am in zombie, and I do not change, he said. And then the creator is going to put plagues upon people. And through these people getting these plagues and all these diseases, people, some people will come back to obedience to the commandments, but other people won't. And he'll kill them off. And then the people who are left, it's a matter of persevering and being tested. What it's all about being tested, because there's going to be a season of testing. That will happen to us. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 and 11. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. So there's going to be a time where the creator comes and he tests people and he's testing them to test those who belong to the world, who disobey all his commandments and he'll test them and put plagues on them. And if they still refuse to be obedient to his commandments, he'll kill them off. But some people during that time will come back into obedience to the commandments and then he'll test them to see who really is his people. Look, Revelation chapter 12. No, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 16, verse 8. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, casting it to scorch everyone with its fire. Everyone was burned by the blast of heat, and they cursed the name of the Creator, who had control over all these plagues. They did not repent of their sins and turn to the Creator. Turn to the word, turn to the commandments, and give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their teeth in anguish, and they cursed the name of the creator of heaven from their pains and sores. But they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to the creator, turn to the word, turn to the commandments. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings of the east could march their armies toward the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Creator. On that great day of judgment, on that great judgment day of the creator. So literally, there's going to be plagues coming, poured out. The creator will do this. So that way, he'll determine amongst who the people that belong to this world, who is really about him. Who will really come back to obedience to his commandments. Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of the life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. But they will all, whoever's worshiping the beast, 
they'll be cast into the pit. But Revelation 17, verse 14, together they will go to war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will defeat them because He is the Creator and the King of all kings. He is called and chosen, and His called and chosen and faithful ones will be with Him. So the ones who are obedient to the commandments until the end. But those who are starting to wake up and see that the Savior is actually Simon Toko. You'll see. Revelation chapter 2 verse 28. Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 through 28. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end. To them I will give authority over all the nations. To those who are victorious, who obey me, the Creator said. Because the Creator is the Savior. So those who obey the Creator, so those who obey the commandments. Because the Creator is the Word, the commandments is the Word. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. To all who are victorious, who obey me, the commandments, to the very end, to them I will give authority over all the nations. They will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my Father, and I will also give them my star. Simon Toko is the savior because those who are of the church of Simon Toko, they're given a star. To those who obey me, it says, to those who obey the commandments, who are victorious until the very end, we will be the ones who are persecuted. Not the Christians, not the Catholics, not the, no, not the religions. But those who are obeying the commandments because none of the religions are obeying the commandments. And following the Savior and obeying the commandments. And the Savior obeyed the commandments and said, follow me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. The commandments. I'm the life. 1 John 5.20 The Creator is eternal life. The Word is eternal life. The commands are eternal life, proven in John chapter 12, verse 50. And I know his commands lead to eternal life. John 14, 6, I'm the way, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, the commands, the word. All praise, glory, and honor belong to the creator. Nzambiam Pungu. We call him Tata. Nzambiam Pungu, because that means Father, Creator, in Kikongo. His name, Nzambiam Pungu. Those who will be brought back from the dead, the world will see and go, Ah! The zombies! Those who worship in zombie. Do you see? That's why the world, and who belongs to the world, is preparing people for an apocalypse. What kind of apocalypse? Oh, those who get brought back from the dead who actually worship the Creator in Zambia Mbungu, who keep His commandments. And the Savior, Simon Toko. Simao Gonsalves Toko. This is the Savior. He is the commandments in the flesh. Simon Toko, or Simao Gonsalves Toko. Simon says, come back to the commandments. Will you listen? All praise, glory, and honor belong to Tata and Zambian Pungu Tulendo, O Mfumu and Zambi, whoever this message falls upon. 
falls upon, please let them hear, let them see, give them a heart of understanding and remove the heart of stone from them and give them a heart of flesh that they may receive your word and that they may accept your commandments and come back into alignment with your commandments for this is the ancient path. This is the way. We know this because the Savior walked in obedience to the commandments. and He said, I'm the way. We know that nobody comes to the Father except through that way. That is obedience to the commandments. We know your commands lead to eternal life because your Son told us this. Please help us to continue to give our time, give our minds, our hearts to your commandments, and come back to your word, for we know you are the word. You are the creator. You are the word. You gave us your word and said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And your word is still here. Thank you for keeping your word. Thank you, Nzamiyambungu, for blessing me with eyes to see, ears to hear, that I may return to you, that I may be healed from the sickness, from the disease, from the illness, the evil, the darkness that continues to run rampant and corrupt everything in this world. Thank you for saving me, and I beg of you, please, whoever this message falls upon, under the sound of my voice, please open their eyes to know you, Nzambiyampungu, and to know the Savior, Simao Gonsal Vishtoko, who is the commandments. I hope this message finds you well, brothers and sisters. Simon says, come back to the commandments. Repent or perish. The kingdom of heaven is near. In Geta.